Station 111, Station 111, we have a possible drowning in the Bow River west of Range Road 274. In the Bow River west of Range Road 274, dispatch clear. Station 111, acknowledge. The mental disruption is greater than the physical disruption, simply because of the nature of the calls that we have. Because we go to nasty calls. And these folks are, uh, that go, that's part of the interview process that we go through. Uh, you can expect this to happen. It might happen on your first call. You might be here 10 years before you see this or something like this. But you're going to see this and you're gonna be involved in this high stress situation, like this. If it's not this, it's like this. And when that happens, um, our station has uh, a chaplain, which we're very fortunate to have, and he's completely independent. As, as a chaplain, he doesn't report to anybody. He doesn't report to me. He doesn't report to Chief Smith. He, he has his own authority to discuss and meet and talk about whatever we have firefighters that want to talk about. And he's our first link if a firefighter has a problem uh, with a scene or a family problem, any mental type problem that causes our people stress, they're encouraged to talk to the chap. Well, about six years ago, there was, uh, I think there was three uh, fatalities and car accidents to younger people here in the area. And uh, as a church, we're just concerned how local firefighters were dealing with uh, the death of people from the community. So I talked with uh, Chief Wenstrom, is there any way that uh, we could support firefighters? And through that conversation, uh, started to talk about the possibility of me becoming a chaplain here at station 111 and uh, talked about that for a couple of months and then i became a chaplain about over five years uh, ago you, you absolutely have to separate the two and it's crucial when i was being interviewed for being a firefighter that was the question that one of the interviews asked me is so when you come on a scene who are you a chaplain or a firefighter so when i come on a scene i'm a firefighter and it's in the the after, the downtime, the quieter time that the chaplain role may come in, into play. But when you first go, there's a scene, there's things that need to be taken care of, so you're 100% the firefighter. But then you start to observe things, and then perhaps when you're not busy, you slide into the chaplain role. Um, I've seen lots of terrible, terrible things, um, but mental health right now 
is at the forefront. Um, the county is very supportive of, of mental health and, and I don't, I, I'm lucky, I don't take that home with me um, unless it's little kids. When you see someone's partner who's passed away, uh, you know the Christmas baking is all out and someone dies three or four days before Christmas. Do you take that home with you? Maybe. Um, but I'm lucky enough that unless it's little kids, it, it doesn't really affect me right now. That's not to say that it won't affect me later, um, but right now I'm lucky enough that no, it doesn't. The challenge, particularly for the male species, for any anyone who's not a male listening, is uh, uh, pride. We don't want to talk about difficult issues. We want to man up. So it's very difficult for someone to open up and, and talk. So the the need is greater than um, the response. What I've told the, the firefighters here is each one of us should be looking for changes in behavior. So someone's normally extroverted and all of a sudden they're very quiet. They used to come early, now they come late. They used to come a lot of calls, now they don't come to very many. All of us should be looking for changes. And each one of us then is responsible, you know, if that's our friend, that's someone we know well, to step in and say, hey, what's, what's going on? Uh, how are you doing? So it isn't just me doing that. It is a team effort and I never want anyone to think that you have to talk to the chaplain because that's not comfortable for everybody. Um, so anyone here is capable of being a support person and if it needs to be bumped up, you can go to the peer support, you can go to psychologists. So it just depends on the degree of support that they need. Some of them are gonna just gonna go out and they're gonna go to a hockey game and have a little chat and that'll be that'll be what they need at that time. I think we have a fairly robust health and safety program in general, um, just because of the county and the size and the number of employees that it, the county has. Um, fire services probably is half <laughs> of the whole um, number of employees, and, and so we, we also have, through just being fire services, um, have set up our own support systems, uh, supported by the county and funded to a great extent. So um, in Langdon, we have um, a chaplain. Uh, that was an initiative actually, um, uh, gr grassroots initiative from the station. And, uh, and that chaplain is actually serves all of Rocky View County Fire Services. And, um, and then we have a, a critical uh, stress management team or a, a response team. And they're tied in and they, they, um, they, they're involved with the province, so provincial level training. Uh, there's a specific call out system uh, for that. Uh, so at any time, whether it be a firefighter, a fire officer, uh, a manager, if they feel that there's, uh, there's uh, been a, a call or an issue, um, they are able to access uh, that group of individuals. The, the county has what's called a peer support network. So I'm, I'm one person on that team. So there are people from the different halls who've also been trained uh, for uh, supporting first responders. So we are, we are a team. They have brochures, they've got ways they can contact. So they could contact anyone on this peer support network. Some guys would like to contact someone they know. Some guys would like to contact someone they don't know. So there's a network that they can contact there's also um, psychologists that the county has that they can contact. Yep, very supportive group. Like, I've never been uh, part of an organization where you get support from absolutely everybody. I, it's actually more than a team, it's a family. So we have guys that, that know how to watch for that stuff. Um, we have tons of resources uh, for dealing with it. And then the biggest thing is family life. Um, you know, I were instructed when we start to go home and tell our family signs and stuff like that of somebody who's maybe not dealing with something as well as they could be. Um, and it's very important that you have a good support system at home. Um, after major incidents, we'll have, a, we'll have a debrief. We'll talk about what went well, what didn't went well. People can provide some uh, feedback or suggestions or questions that, that, um, that the officers or the, the, the chief will, will respond to afterwards. But yeah, no, it's good. So if anybody does have questions, we can, we can resolve them. Again, without giving the full details of the situation, you talk about it just to, to, to air it out and, and, then, um, and then move on. So, yeah, 
no, I haven't been in any situations that I've really, really struggled with where I've needed to talk to someone, but I do know, and, and that's one good thing about the fire hall is, um, and Rocky View is that they, they do have services that you can reach out to should you need it. So I have close friends who were qualified to be a support person for me. Um, and I'm part of a provincial network of chaplains. So again, I have people that I can phone, email, who have been trained in doing what I do. So I do have a, a support network that I can rely on. We don't always know why someone, someone quits. But in talking to guys who've been here a lot longer than I have, they would suggest that some have quit over traumatic events. Often if they're new uh, on the fire department and they come onto a scene where there's one or more fatalities and they just weren't prepared for that, that's never been part of their, their journey. For some, that's, they realize it's too much. It's not something that they want to do on their, you know, part-time job, they've got enough, enough stress in their full-time job and family. So that's just, they look at that as like, no, that's, that's way too much. So for sure some have stepped aside because um, some of the things we see are very difficult to see. So it's not, it's not for everybody, for sure. There probably have been a couple that I'm, that may have left for those reasons. Um, and in some, case, some respects, you don't really know until you get into this, what it's gonna be like. You know, when you, when you go to your first uh, motor vehicle accident where there's a fatality, um, that can be, can be pretty gruesome. You don't really know what that's gonna be like until you get there. Like, if I experience something for the first time, it might take two or three days or something like that, or I might be okay the second day and then the third day it hits again <laughs> and then it's gone and then if I dealt with it more times like say you know uh, CPR for something that hasn't gone the way it could go uh, or should go if I've done CPR 10 times and it's unsuccessful that's okay I'm I'm okay I just talk to my wife I'd say is, is how I get through it I just discuss it with her tell her what I'm feeling and that's about it though I haven't really I've been fortunate enough that I, I haven't <laughs> had a lot of issues, had any issues with mental health. Their go-to would be one of each other. So they would talk to their, you know, good friend here, someone they've been a firefighter with for a long period of time, and that's the level that they want to go to. So as long as they get support, that's, uh, that's what we're interested in. It's, I'll be honest, it's, it's tough on the family sometimes. Um, my kids are at that age where they don't want anything to do with mom or dad. So, um, but with the, with the wife, it does affect our marriage a little bit, um, just because there there's times where you're not home when you should be, in, or you're in the middle of a family dinner and, and you go. And if it's like a long, long scene, like there's been one scene where we were on 13 hours, um, and she called to make sure everything was good because she hadn't heard from me in a very long time. Um, and you know what, my wife is very supportive, so she's understanding, but there's times where they get a little frustrated or where she gets a little frustrated. In the beginning, it's difficult. It is extremely difficult. We, you know, through time, there's more and more uh, support. So you, you lean on the folks that we talked about earlier, right? But um, certainly in the last decade or so, there's been more support mechanism, understood that it does impact people and, and there's support within the organization. So, I mean, we've got a couple members that specialize in those types of uh, post-serious incident support mechanisms. And then, of course, all the organizations have other methods to support those types of things on, you know, where, you know, situations are such that most of the team is impacted, right? Because everything that happens has some sort of impact on you. You do get seasoned somewhat. You see enough of it, you do get to accept. But generally, I think what you have to do is you have to, interestingly enough, you have to be able to learn to distance from it. You know, he's definitely seen some things that people really shouldn't have to see in life. Um, we talk about it. Uh, having worked with fire services in the past, 
having an emergency management background. Um, some of the things that he tells me aren't all that shocking to me, um, but they probably would be to somebody else. But I think because we can talk about it, he's able to get that out and move on and move forward. Nope, no injuries. Um, it's actually driven me to um, go to the gym more. Like, I used to be a smoker, and then I quit about three years ago. It was tough. Um, but you know what, coming in here, and then because it's, it can be very physically demanding at times. So I'm like, you know what, I don't want to be that guy that can't do it. I also work out too, like the guys are good here. Um, some of them help me in the gym and how to train and how to work out. And so I've been doing a lot of that and it's gotten really good, a lot better. Cardio's gotten better. And so just improvements, like from where I was when I first started my municipal fire career in 2012 to now, big difference. Uh, no, I gotta say, I think you, being on the fire department uh, <laughs> probably makes you a little fitter. Um, it's a very physically demanding job. No, I work out lots. Um, I, uh, the leading cause of death for firefighters right now is heart attacks. And that's not somewhere I wanted to be, so I do weights four times a week, and I do cardio four times a week. You know, you need to be f fairly well physically fit for this job. It's, the vast majority of calls uh, are not real strenuous, um, but certainly there's some that are. An actual structure fire, um, that is a very strenuous activity. Uh, you need to be in reasonably good shape to be able to do that safely, uh, for your own safety and for the safety of your team members. Um, so, so yeah, physical fitness is definitely important. Uh, when we when you first start here, the, we, we do a uh, require that people get a, a medical exam from a doctor, basically saying that you're uh, physically uh, able to do this job. Um, beyond that, at the paid per call stations, we don't really have an ongoing fitness uh, program or, or evaluations. Like I say, you will, you'll find out real soon on scene if you're not physically fit, and that's not, that's not good for anybody. I can't remember if it was my very first call or one of the very first, like in my first week, is we actually had an airplane crash. Um, on any call, you don't know what it's gonna be like until you get there. And at that time, I was so inexperienced that, am I gonna be able to do anything? Like, what if I do something wrong? Uh, it was all going through my head. For sure, there's always that in the back of my mind, what if we, what if I make a mistake? We are dealing with, you know, serious issues. Um, high risk situations. So there's always a little bit of that in my mind, like what if I do this wrong? What if it gets someone hurt or, or whatever, right? What if we don't, what if it affects the patient? Like what if we don't provide the best care that we can? That's always a small thought. Uh, but now that I've been on the department for a while, it's less about what could go wrong. It's more on the way to a call, especially is what are we gonna do right like how are we going to fix this problem uh, i've been to to one motor vehicle collision that um it was my first motor vehicle collision that that had an impact on me and and it it bothered me for for a couple weeks um and it was more about you know what if what if that person what's that person's family how are they how are they dealing with uh, the situation after after this uh, this incident and and you don't know um you never know that's that's also one of the the, the challenging things is, you know, what, um, if in the event that we most of the time we can help people, but what if we can't? Um, you know, what what is, what's the ripple effects to those those family members? And and you never get that that uh, closure. I I took a course um, with the county on on mental health, and one of the things that that the guy um, told us with coping was he said if you do something positive after a bad call you can expect a positive outcome. If you do something negative, you can expect a negative outcome. Anything that, that's positive is where I kinda 
focus my energy after a bad one. Yeah, like knowledge, knowledge and experiences uh, really helps ease any sort of um, fears or anxiety. Uh, it all comes back to training. Uh, the training kicks in. You do what you have to do, but we're all we're all human. So when you do, and I've been on scenes uh, where it is someone I know, and uh, it it makes you you always try to do your best. But in those moments, I think you're trying even harder because you know this person and you want the result to be uh, good for them. You want it to turn out well for them, and uh, because we're community firefighters and many of the firefighters know people in the community we're all going to be on scenes where someone we know uh, it's it's not uncommon for hugs to be part of of what we're doing too because there's that human connection i've come in the door for medical scenes and i see who the homeowner is i didn't know they lived in that house and the first thing was a hug because they just felt so relieved that help was there and it's someone they know the most stress in the calls initially is the the what what of and are you going to be able to meet the challenge type of thing you know like the thoughts that go through your head as you start to understand what the call's about and what you're going to be dealing with but you know if you go back to what i said before are you visualizing being able to help people and get them back to where they need to be when all is lost it's not a good feeling right you know what for the it's it's been pretty good like i've seen a lot of gruesome stuff already um and I've honestly figured it would affect me, but it hasn't. Um, but we have a really good support group too, right? Um, like our chaplain, if, if we have issues with a scene or something, um, and, and even our fellow colleagues, we'll, we'll talk amongst each other. And So it isn't just me doing that, but I am also watching for changes in behavior. And it can happen on a scene. It can, uh, it can happen here at the hall or you know, we could go for coffee or whatever, but I, I would notice something and then I'm gonna ask them if they're doing all right. And they may or may not be, and if they tell me they're doing fine, then that's, that's as far as it's going to go. They have to want, uh, they have to want to talk. I do take the job home with me in not as far as like, um, like the fire department's always on my mind. There's been the couple calls that you find yourself thinking about, you know, days, weeks after the incident, you know, you're just sitting there and you, you end up thinking about it. So there are, I think that's unavoidable being on the fire department. Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna see something that you're not gonna be able to get out of your head. Um, but as far as uh, the majority of calls, I, I think i have relatively good at detaching myself from situations I mean I get to go home to my wife and three kids so well I, I enjoy I enjoy what I do as a pastor it's there's a lot of similarities it's helping people in fire where you know someone has a bad day and we're called and we're helping people so there's a lot of and I do volunteer in the community too so all of them have the common link of of helping people balance comes in, in making sure I'm doing well mental uh, mental health wise and as long as I'm doing well then we keep going if I need to pull back a bit then then I need to pull back. <laughs>